This program has been made possible in part by Webs, America's Yarn Store, a source for knitting and crocheting yarns and supplies. Yarn.com. I'm here today with Connie Chang Kinkyo, who's a knitwear designer and the author of the new book, Textured Stitches. Welcome, Connie. Thanks, Umi. So I feel like you're really known for fabrics with beautiful all-over texture as well as some really fine, subtle details. Is that kind of like where, where you are as a designer? Yeah, I like incorporating texture into my patterns in a variety of ways, like you said, in details and also in all-over um, stitches. This sweater on the left, I feel like, is classic Connie, this really <laughs> fine, subtle detailing just in one place. Yeah, I just, I, for me, stockinette is still my first love. So this sweater is, like you said, classic me in that sense is that most of it is in stockinette. So it's easy to sit in front of the TV and knit it. And yet there is some details like on the cuffs and along the neckline, mm. um, there's some seed stitch. And what kind of fiber blend is this? I feel like it really shows off the... It's okay. wool, it's very resilient, um, it, uh, elastic. And so, like you said, it just really, the textures just pop on that. And then it's fun to see how the stitches change in a different yarn, like in an alpaca silk, which is really drapey. That's right, they soften a bit. Um, but still, I mean, because it's a solid color, it still shows off the stitches quite nicely. And, um, but the alpaca and the silk blend just gives it a great drape um, on the body. And it looks like th these are all the stitches that you need for the sweater. That's correct. Um, this is the stockinette, and this is the seed stitch, and this is the cable. Well, I feel like, like cables are kind of an important component of your work, so it would be great to show everybody. Of course. And when I usually do cables, I don't like to use a cable needle because I find them very finicky. So I just... So you're actually dropping the stitches off. I am, and then transferring to my other needle, and then putting the other stitch back on like and that. And that's a front cross, right? That's because right. Because the stitches move across the front. Right, two f stitches across the front. So you've actually put your stitches out of order and now you're gonna work them. That's right. And I just find it so much more easy rather than picking up and dropping a cable needle every time. What a great way of working a cable. So now you're working across, right, to the next cable? That's right. And is that just a simple moss stitch or seed stitch? It's a moss stitch. So a simple knit pearl pattern? Right, it's a variation of the seed stitch that adorns the neckline of this pullover. And now I'm at the point where I wanna do a back cross and for that I drop this stitch, pick it up with the needle, put the two back on. Wow, what a fast and handy way of doing that. It's just convenient. I'm very lazy. I don't like um, having lots of extra implements. <laughs> well, and it means that you can do it anywhere, even if and you don't need to worry about losing a cable needle. That's right. Well, great. So let's take a kind of a tour through um, through your design repertoire. I feel like this collection really presents kind of who you are as a designer. Let's start here. So this is the um, Ornati gloves, and um, the main focus of this is the twisted stitches um, mm -hmm. in the center, this sort of argyle motif. And let's lift them up so everybody can see them. And then I have some, a, design, a technique that's new to me. This is the Vickel braid. Um, I just love the way the stitches move across. And then these are more of a simpler glove, right? With that's right. I wanted the focus to be entirely on the cuff, and so I just use a very simple smocking stitch and um, let a beautiful hand-dyed yarn tell the rest of the story. And it's so clever. It really has form and function, because smocking really does have the same elasticity that you would expect from a cuff, but with, right. a, with kind of a twist. And then tell me about this sweater. Oh, this sweater is um, it's just a very classic, you can wear it to work type of sweater. Um, the yarn is a gauge that I like to work with a lot, um, fine gauge. And again, the and focus- And why do you like fine gauges? I just find that they drape better. Um, mm -hmm. They're more comfortable to wear. Um, you don't have to take them off in a hot room because they're just lighter. Um, and also because when you're doing texture stitches, if you have a fine gauge, you have a bigger canvas to work on. Mm -hmm. More stitches. That's right, exactly. So, and this is beautiful here. Is this just a twisted stitch or yes. what is the? It's just a twisted stitch. So you don't even have to do my trick of uh, dropping the stitches. You can just twist them right on um, the needle themselves. This is beautiful. And it's all the way up and down the, the button band and then around the neck. And then around the neck, right, exactly. And then this is kind of a departure. It's 
more of a worsted or bulky weight gauge. Yeah, I, I wanted to add a little bit of variety to, to the book and give um, people who like w working with larger weight yarns um, something to do as well. And so I just used this beautiful hand dyed yarn. It's wool, it's um, very hardy, uh, it's almost like a jacket. Mm -hmm. And it has this collar that I love because when you button it up, it turns into a cowl. So it almost transforms the look of the jacket from one look to another. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, I notice that you use sort of subtle hand dyes or kettle dyes frequently with texture, and sometimes they don't play together very well. How do you, do you do anything to mitigate that or have any tips for working with that? I don't personally. I know that you're supposed to change skeins every two rows. Um, I've been lucky so far that the yarns I've worked with have been dyed so expertly that there's nothing too garish mm -hmm. in terms of clashing colors. It just sort of pulls together nicely. That's really nice. And then. I love this hat because I feel like you're using this lace as a textural element in itself. We think of lace as being flat, but. Exactly, and in this book, I wanted to stay away from lace and um, small, um, small exceptions like this hat because the lace, like you said, is a textural element. It almost looks like a cable the way the, mm -hmm. the yarn overs and the decreases work together. And then let's wrap up with this. I feel like this, this shawl, it's very subtle. It's very, very beautiful. Tell me kind of how you plan this cable pattern. I wanted the shawl to be, of course with shawls and scarves, you want something that's reversible. So I wanted something reversible and this knit two, pearl two um, cable just did the trick. Um, it's a big cable, it's a subtle fold in the fabric. It's, if you don't look too closely at it, it almost looks like it's just pure ribbing. And so I like the fact that it draws your eye in. Um, Subtle and makes you look twice. And you could work this over a smaller number of stitches or in a drapier or fabric. Exactly, it's very versatile. It could be a scarf, it could be a larger wrap. Um, you could basically make it into whatever you want it to be. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, thanks so much, Connie. If you'd like to knit one of Connie's sweaters, the pattern for the Chiave pullover is on the web.